Welcome to the Modern Real Estate Investor Podcast, where we interview the biggest and most successful real estate entrepreneurs, investors, and capital raisers in the world to provide you with the tool sets, the mindsets, and the skill sets to help you conquer yourself, your life, your marriage, and use real estate as your wealth creation vehicle so that you can live a more successful, happy, and fulfilled life of growth and contribution. If what you're after is having it all, if what you desire is becoming the best version you can be across all areas, mentally, physically, emotionally, spiritually, sentimentally, and financially, you've come to the right place. We will bring to you the best of the best real estate entrepreneurs who will give you the insights, knowledge, experience, and skills so that you can go out and crush it financially and across all areas of your life. Grab pencil and paper, sit back, enjoy, and you are welcome to the Modern Real Estate Investor Podcast. Hello, beautiful people. Welcome to another episode of the Modern Real Estate Investor Podcast. As always, I'm, I'm super excited to be with you, with, with you here today and I have another incredible guest. And before I introduce this modern king to you, though, I just want to, I just want to give, ask all of you for a favor. All of you who are watching, I just want to ask you for a favor. And I want to ask you that if you get something out of this interview, if you get some type of value and insight, if you learn any, any new skill, or maybe you get some motivation or some inspiration to go out and take some action and keep on moving forward towards your goals, I want to ask you to please share this episode. Share it with some of your friends, share it with someone you think this might impact share it to someone who might be interested in real estate, share it and help us help other people and spread the message. And to all of you who do take action and share this episode, I send you a big thank you and a big hug. So today I have Martin, Martin Perdomo. Is that, is that how you say your name, man? Señor. Exactly awesome. like that. Great. And uh, Martin is the CEO and founder of Skilled Property Finders, a multi-million dollar real estate investing company. He has been an entrepreneur for over two decades and Marty, Martin earned his six figure uh, six six figures at the age of 24 after discovering personal development. And he's an active real estate investor operating, owning more than 112 multifamily apartments and is the largest developer in his market, real developer in his market. And his passion is to empower others to become the best version of, the, of themselves. And he teaches striving and active entrepreneurs how to create wealth through entrepreneurship and real estate investing as he himself has done. So um, one another in interesting thing about about uh, Martin is that he's a certified mindset strategist and he possesses the skill set to help people reframe their mindset to help them get from where they are to where they want to be. So he's a big into mindset, super excited to talk about that real estate and everything. So Martin, thank you very much for, for being here, man. I really appreciate you and you're welcome to the show. Thank you for having me, Alex. It's uh, my pleasure, honor to to share with you and share with your audience, man. Awesome. And so um, the first thing that I do with my <clears throat> that I do with my guest is I ask them to walk us through their real estate investing journey in 75 seconds or less. 75 seconds. What's that? A minute and 15 seconds? Yeah. Um, so so I I started in real estate at I bought my first piece of real estate when I was 20, uh, 21. I was about to turn 21. I was 20, 21. My wife and I, well, at the time, she was my girlfriend. And uh, we bought our first piece of real estate. She was pregnant with our second son. And we had no idea what we were doing. I went into, at the time, I was selling insurance. I went into, when I moved to, we sold that house in 2000. And what year did we sell that house? 2002, 2003. So a few years after we bought it. And we built the house here in Pennsylvania. And when I, we moved here, I got into the mortgage business. So I was the guy giving out the the, the easy money in 2008. I owned a mortgage company, okay. a mortgage company. And I was the guy writing those loans, those subprime loans. And I bought my first property in 2007. I paid $275,000 for that first property, but I had no idea what I was doing. The only reason I bought that property, Alex, is because I was giving money was so easy and people were walking into my office and I was giving people money so easy that I had FOMO. I was a young man. I was uh, 26 years old, 26, 27 years old. And I was, I, I felt like real estate was never going to go back down and that if I didn't buy, there was not going to be any for me. So I went and I bought this, this, this duplex, not too far from my office, not too far from here, actually by East Strasburg university. I bought it. Just picture this. Okay. I've always been a really creative entrepreneur. I bought this property for 275. I got to the table and I walked away with 15,000 and the asset. So think about that going to a, to a closing 
buying the property and pocketing 15,000 and have keeping the house, right? Because I was a finance guy. I was able to create some really fine, you know, really creative financing strategies. And back then we were able to do a lot of really interesting things. Anyways, two years later, that house was $200,000 under, I'm sorry, a hundred thousand dollars in the water. I paid 275. 2009, that property was worth $179,000. And I was, I was in, in, in a lot of trouble, man. I was in uh, negative yeah. network net worth. I had a HELOC. I did not understand money at the time. I did not understand this business. I did not know how to run the numbers. And I was close to $200,000 in debt in 2000 to 2009, 2011. Okay. And um, 14 years later, right? I bought that in 2007. I bought, I'm buying, I bought a quad here up the street from my office, not too far from there. Appraiser comes in my office and he says to me, I say to him, hey, what are what are you going to appraise my property at? This is a fourplex. He goes, I don't know yet. I'm going to look at I'm going to look at it. He hands me over a vanilla envelope. I look in there. I see a property two doors down from that first property I just mentioned to you. That first property I bought. Mm -hmm. Two doors down from there, a comp duplex, exactly the same thing. Just sold in September of 2022 for $385,000. So why do cool. I share this with you? Why do I share this with you? 2007, I bought my first property, my first real estate. I had no idea what I was doing. I knew shit. I knew nothing about numbers or if I was cash flowing or not. I was making money. Now I know I was making money. Back then, I didn't understand money. 2009, I was $100,000 in the water. 2022, same property worth 385000 It would have been worth $110,000 more than I paid 14 years ago, even even while I overpaid. What's the moral of the story? Moral of the story is don't wait to buy real estate. Buy mm. real estate and wait. Real estate nice. is very forgiving over the long haul. Had I knew that as a young man and had I had the vision of just hang on, just as long as I'm cash flowing, hang in there as long as the numbers make sense and, the, and I'm running my business like a business, I'm always going to make money. And that's how you create wealth in real estate, it's over the long game. Mm, cool. So I want to ask you a, a um, something that I'm very interested in, in well, learning more about you directly and, and something that I think can really benefit the audience, right? Which is the three forces of creation, which is something that I know helped you to go from almost $200,000 in debt to being a millionaire, right? In a couple of years. But before I ask about that, man, you said that you felt some FOMO, right? And FOMO comes from scarcity, right? And yep. sc Hello, modern kings and queens. At my company, Millionaire Network Automation, we believe in the power of networking. We believe that in real estate, your net worth is your network. This is why we help real estate investors raise capital by connecting them with their ideal investors and helping them build a massive network of their ideal investors in less than 30 days and with only four hours of work per week. If you're interested in this, click the link below in the description of this podcast to learn how you can propel your growth with a reliable system that will consistently help you connect with your ideal investors, build trust, add value, get your investors to promote you and put you in front of more of their investor friends and raise more capital faster and in a much more effortless way so that you can achieve your financial freedom and still have the time and the energy to pour into every single other area of your life. So go watch the training and you're going to have the opportunity to book a call to talk about how you can get this 100% done for you system implemented in the next five days. So thank you for watching and I'll see you later and enjoy the rest of the, this episode. Bye-bye. Scarcity has been a huge thing. Like I'm pretty young. I'm very, I'm 22 actually. Right. And, um, mm -hmm. um, and like, I also went into personal development. I actually, actually did insurance, man. I actually did insurance as well. You sold life. Um, life. Okay, good. It's a yeah, good place I did insurance. to start because you learn, you learn, you learn sales. You learn hustle. Oh yeah. You get, you get your ass kicked and you learn a few things quick. Yeah. So I, I went into insurance and then I started a digital marketing agency selling leads to insurance agents because I, you know, that it was, it was easier and I made more money. Um, but yeah, man, that it's, it's pretty cool to know that. But, um, you know, I also started in personal development and, and like in this journey of like self growth and self discovery and reflections, all of that scarcity has been a huge thing, man. Like it appears everywhere. So like, let me tell you a story, right? So um, the other day I, w I went to the mall with my, with my wife and my uh, daughter and we went to buy my daughter some, some clothes. Right. And she's two. 
and we bought her like a thousand dollars of clothes, right? Like a lot of, a lot of clothes. And then we were going back from the mall. We had finished doing all the shopping and everything. And then I had like a bad feeling in my heart. Like I was just, I was not having it. I was not feeling it. And I was like, I told my wife, let's see, put her, put something on her. Like just let's try something on. And man, she could swim on the, on the clothes. Like she could swim. Like they were oversized. And I was really, and I was reflecting, man. And, and, and I unconsciously bought a thousand dollars of clothes to, for my daughter and all of the, every single piece of, of thing that I bought for her didn't fit right. And the reason that I did that was because when I was little, my mother used to buy my shoes and my clothes and everything, right? Like one or two size bigger so that she didn't have to buy for like a long time. Yeah. Right. And I found myself doing that, even though I wasn't, I wasn't lacking money anymore. I found myself doing the same thing, repeating the same, um, the same, um, the same process, the same cycle. And it was like an, an incredible lesson. And then like scarcity has appeared in every single area, like in a bunch of areas of my life. So for example, in marketing, I used to want to make it when I, when I did a, a marketing video, I used to want to cram everything that I wanted to say in like 10 seconds, right? Because, because people had a short attention spans and a bunch of stories that I told myself, right? But the reality was that it was scarcity because I, I, I was, I was fearful of missing out. I was fearful of having people not watch, not watch or listen to everything that I had to say. And now I realized that, you know, that was scarcity. And now I have like a more abundant mindset and I know that the right people are the ones who are going to listen and those are the right people and that's enough, right? But um, scarcity is a big thing for entrepreneurs, right? And it's a, it's a journey. And um, you felt that, right? So, so tell me, man, like what are some lessons that you've learned when it comes to scare from shifting from a scarcity mentality and going into a more abundant mindset? Okay. So, so one thing I haven't shared with you is, so I lived the first five, my mom, my mom came pregnant here with me from the Dominican Republic and she sent me back home right after I was born, a few months after I was born. And I lived in Dominican Republic from the time I was born basically to five years old. And we were very poor. I grew up very, very poor. And in that poverty, we were so poor, we didn't have running water in the in our house. I didn't have running water. We had to walk half a block to go get water. In un pozo, they called it. And it would be early in the morning, and we would have to go get... I remember as a baby, as a kid, walking back with my gallon of water. So we have water to brush our teeth. Anyways, that kind of stuff. And then I came here to the U.S. and grew up in a one-bedroom apartment with four siblings in New York City and Washington Heights. There's more drugs in that area in New York City in Washington Heights and Harlem than there was in the whole state of New York at the time. Yeah. And so that just gives your, gives your audience context. So how did I overcome that mindset? I always knew as a young person, I would tell my mother as a young person that I wasn't born to be poor, that I was born to be wealthy, that I was born to be rich. I would, I, I always hated not being able to buy the things I wanted when I wanted. I remember as a young, as a young kid, Remember one time my, my wife came to pick me up. There was, there's a store called the body shop where they sell lotions. And I used to be the manager. I was 17 years old. I used to be the assistant manager. And my girlfriend at the time, which is my wife today, uh, she comes to pick me up. And I remember coming up, it was an 125th and fifth Avenue. I don't know if you're familiar with New York, but that's Harlem right in the middle of dead smack, uh, the middle of New York city. And okay. I remember her coming to pick me up. And I remember me, looking across the street and pointing to a building to her. It's a burned down building. So Harlem used to, is 125th was known to be really, really uh, run down and hood and, and ghetto. And I remember looking across the street and telling my wife, hey, hey babe, you see that building? Imagine if I can rehab that building, if I could take it, fix it and rent it, right? And rent it and I can collect the rent, I would be rich. I was a 17 year old kid. Right? You, didn't, no you didn't know anything about real estate? I didn't know nothing about real estate. And my wife and I, we always romanticize that we would always talk about owning hotels. Mm. Hey, if we can own hotels, we always liked real estate, her and I. We always, we always talked about romanticize about owning property. And that was my, that, that was, I remember telling her that. And today that's what I'm doing. Like, that's what I do. I'm buying a 12 unit apartment building. Today I walked a, a five unit a five unit fire property, which is exactly what I saw across the street. That like exactly what I saw. Like I'm literally, I walked the property exactly like that today that I'm buying and, and I'm rehabbing and renting out today. 
but I've always had this, this love for real estate. And I always had this drive to be, to have, to have money. Now that doesn't change that I grew up in poverty and that everyone around me and the way I was programmed was not for, for wealth and, yeah. and, and, and creating assets was to work hard in the Latino culture. As you know, they teach mm-hmm. us, you work hard, you get a job, you work hard, but that's it. And you save your money. We don't know nothing. We don't talk, they don't talk to us about investing. They don't talk to us about, about uh, creating wealth, creating, creating assets, income producing assets. We do, no one teaches us that, but I just had this drive and I had this thing. And sometimes it creeps up, right? This scarcity mindset things creeps up sometimes if, if when you're not careful, because it's a journey, it's, it's a way you're programmed. So, so, you create you you create your habits from the time you're zero to nine. I'm also a hypnotherapist and a and a certified mindset strategist. I'm an NLP practitioner, and you create your your identity and you're ingrained in who you're going to become from the age zero to six, nine years old. And those first zero to six, I mean, nine years old were were very poor times for me. Like all I saw was poverty, lack. Mm-hmm. Right. So it took a lot of work and a lot of reading and personal development. I still do. I, I'm committed to constant and never ending improvement. So that is, that in and of itself is a journey, you know, and if you want me to touch on, on the three forces of creation, I can touch on that if you like. Please. But, um, Go ahead, yeah. 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 So, so the three forces of creation is something that I've learned, that I learned uh, uh, some time ago from my mentor. And it's three things that you need to create anything. Okay. Like. So it's, you know, I've been married now 21 years. I've been with my wife for 26 years. Awesome. Um, we have four beautiful children. Uh, I've been, I've been in business for 26 years, actually 25 years, 25 years. I've been in business now and I've been in real estate since 2000. Actually I've been in real estate really since 2005. Mm-hmm. Right? Cause that's I was in the mortgage industry, but there's three things that you need to create, to create, anything you want in life. And that's the first thing is you need is you need to focus, right? So to your listeners out there and whatever it is, and this applies to your marriage, this applies to your business, this applies to your children, this applies to your health, this applies to any area of your life. It's a so huge con- one, man. Yeah. So for context, let's just say for business, right? Because we're talking business here. Let's just say for, for real estate, you need to focus, whatever it is, you need to focus. Right now with these things, all of us have one of these in our phones. And I tell you, when I grew up, when I was growing up in the, in the nineties, for us to think that I was going to carry a little box like this in my, in my pocket, and I was going to be able to turn it on and see someone across the world in Dominican Republic, talk to my boys in DR, right? Like, holy smokes. That was like, that was like, like that you would have told me that I was like, that, that, that's just unbelievable. The Jetsons. Right. And yet here we, excuse me, here we are, we have this technology. So with this technology is so easy to lose focus. Everyone's got something to say. Everyone's got something to teach. Everyone's, someone's talking about cryptocurrency. Someone's talking about T-bills. Someone's talking about real estate. Someone's talking about uh, digital marketing. Everyone's selling something. Everyone, that's the next best thing. You have to choose what you want. And you have to focus on that one thing. There's a great book I'm going to recommend to you if you haven't read it or to your listeners is the one thing by Gary Keller. Mm -hmm. One thing by Gary Keller. Amazing book. I decided on real estate. I'm going to tell you why I decided on real estate. I decided on real estate. I met this guy in 2007, no, 2009, right after I lost my mortgage broker's license and I lost that business. I met this guy. His name was um, Jay Javier. Jay, Jay Morales, Javier Morales. And this guy had a full-time job in Verizon and he had come to me to do a refinance for him. Cause I was in the mortgage industry at that, at that time. And he owned a lot of real estate and I was Mr. Entrepreneur. And this guy was killing it, man. He was just killing it. And I was like, how does this guy have a full-time job working for Verizon? And he owns like 40 doors. He has this beautiful house. He's got like, do like how, and I'm Mr. Entrepreneur. And I got shit, right? And I'm struggling yeah. with my duplex. I'm like, how is, what does he know that I don't know? And that's when I realized that I needed a system. I needed, I needed something. But anyways, in that journey, when I met Javier, I started doing some research. That was around the time that YouTube start came out. 
and uh, video and stuff like that. What was Google and all that was kind of just coming out. And I started doing some research on real estate, right? And real estate investing and millionaires. And I found an interesting, I found an interesting piece of data online. And that is that 90% of self-made millionaires, I come from poverty, 90% of self-made millionaires are made through real estate mm -hmm. around the world, not just in the US, around the world. So I quickly realized that my best bet to become wealthy is to be a real estate investor, is to learn this game of real estate, go focus, get educated, learn it, go learn from the best, surround myself with people doing it and go start modeling what they're doing, modeling success. And I decided to focus on that one thing. I was selling insurance at the time and I had a family at this point, I had my four kids, right? And so it was a slow grind. It was a slow grind because I had to feed my family, still sell insurance, and then at the same time, offset and build my portfolio, start building my portfolio. So, but I decided to focus. So that's the number one thing. Number one is focus. Decide what it is, focus. Number two is massive action. You have to execute. Effective execution, action is the cure right? Taking action is a cure. So if you have a listener out there right now that's thinking, you know, I have a job, I have a full-time job. Well, you know, you know how to beat your competition. I'm going to tell you the secret to beating your competition. Get up earlier, go to sleep later, come into the office on Saturdays, work an hour or two on Sunday mornings, work an hour or two Sunday evenings. When you're on the journey to create wealth, you have to compound your time that you're investing into what you're building right? You're going to get out what you put in. Yeah. I understand. I understand the journey of having a family and having things and having bills. Dude, I've been there. I've been there. And you have to, it, but in order to get out of that rat race, you have to sacrifice something. It ain't going to be easy and it ain't going to be, you're not just going to get it just because you want it. You're going to have to do something for it. Right. That means for sure. wake, up, wake up earlier, go to sleep later. I used to, what I used to do when my kids were smaller, I used to wait till everyone was in bed, put the kids in bed. My wife would be in bed by nine o'clock. When everyone was in bed, I would sacrifice two, three hours. That's when I would work. That's when I would go on Craigslist. That's when I would look for deals. I would sacrifice my own sleep, not my family time, but my sleep time to sacrifice, to, to, to build my other business, my real estate business. So, Number two is you got to take action. You got to take action. You got to show, if, if we're talking real estate, you got to show up to meetups. You got to invest in yourself. You got to read books. Jim Rohn, the great, late, the late, great Jim Rohn used to say, stand guard at the door of your mind. That means pay attention to who you're associating with, pay attention to what you're listening to, pay attention to who you're surrounding yourself with, be intentional on what you let into your brain. How do you start your day? Are you listening to a to podcast like this? Are you listening to, to people that are going to inspire you, that are going to motivate you? Or are you listening to gossip bullshit that doesn't, that doesn't help you? Are you listening to news? News just brings you down. It's all, all it has is negativity. And number three, I'm going to say is the most important ingredient, brother. That's grace. Grace? Grace. On grace. yourself? No, you have to have grace, meaning gratitude. Oh, okay. You've got to have gratitude. See, there's a secret. There, there's a secret in, um, in abundance. In, 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 there's a universal secret, right? If you believe in God or you, the universe, whatever you believe, I, I, I believe in God. Me too. There, there, there's a secret that when you have gratitude, when you're grateful for what you have, God tends to give you more of what you want. Yeah, for sure. So every day be grateful for what you, what's in front of you. Every day be grateful, wake up in the morning and say, thank you, Lord, or whatever, whatever, whatever. Just be grateful. I have a gratitude journal. I have a journal every morning that I wake up and in my journal, I can share that with your, with your audience. In my journal, the first three things that I write in my journal, it's a journal that my mentor, my mentor just bought a bank and he created this, he created this journal. It's called the Elite Journal. No plug. I make no money. It's just a great tool that I use. I've been on this personal development journey for many years, and it's the best tool that I use. 
And this journal goes like this. The first three things that I write in that journal every morning, every day, you put the date, three things I'm grateful for. So immediately you're focusing your brain on gratitude. I'm grateful for my health. I'm grateful for my family. I'm grateful for my home, whatever, whatever comes to you. The next three things is the top three goals for this year. What are your top three goals for the year? You're writing them down every day. One, two, three goals. The next thing you'd write is what are the top three things that you have to do today to get you closer to those three goals for this year? Mm -hmm. And then you write the rest of the things that you have to do that day. See what that does is it keeps you focused. You have gratitude and it creates the right actions that you have to take. That's going to get you closer to your goals. Awesome. And those are the, the three forces of creation and focus, massive action and grace. And with the gratitude one minute, I think that's, that's a huge one, right? Because like for anyone out there, like whether you're a spiritual person and you call it manifestation or you are into like religion and you call it blessing or you're a, 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 a scientist and you call it quantum physics, uh, quantum, no, wait, what quantum physics. Yeah. Like no one, or, or you're into magic and you call it magic, right? No mm-hmm. one is denying its existence. Right. And actually I have a chart, a chart here. And for anyone watching on YouTube, I'm showing something to the camera, right? Like this is like a shard for like emotional vibrations, right? And then all the way to the bottom, there's things like shame and guilt and fear, right? And then all the way to the top, the highest vibrational frequencies, it, there's love and joy and peace. And love is at 500, right? Well, gratitude, man, and that's like at the top. Gratitude is like 540. Like it's proven that 500, that, that gratitude, like the feeling of gratitude has a 540 vibrational frequency. Um, and like, yeah, like you attract more and like, like, ju- just like you said, God likes when you're grateful because, and when you're grateful, he wants to give you more. Right. And that's totally true. I apply that every single day in my life and, um, and ab- abundance. So what's the difference between abundance and scarcity? Like it's just the perception, right? Cause the scarcity is just the perception of lack. And then abundance is just the perception of, of having some uh, have a having that is triggered by gratitude. So like everyone, no matter who you are, no matter how little you have, you could focus your attention on what you do have and be grateful for it. And all of a sudden you're an abundant being, right? All of a sudden you're not in lack, but you're in, you're in abundance. And when you're in abundance, when you're grateful, you get more to be grateful for and you, you get more to be even more abundant. So um, I love that one, man. I, uh, yeah. I, I'm I pretty, will share, I will share this with you though, man. You know, when you're broke and you're on your ass and you don't, you don't have anything and you don't, it's hard. You know, yeah. It's very hard. So what I'm going to say to what I, my, my suggestion, cause I've been there, I've been there not knowing how I'm gonna pay the mortgage next month, not knowing how I'm going to put food on the table, not knowing if I could put juice, if I could buy half, if I'm going to be able to afford to buy juice this month for the kids, I know what that's like. And what I'm going to say to you, if that's you listening right now, is you just got to make a decision that you want better, right? It first starts with a decision. You have to decide that you want better, and then you have to commit to that decision. And gratitude is a muscle. And I'm going to tell you, it doesn't just, it's not like, oh, I'm going to be grateful and I'm going to pray every day. You know, I have a really, I have a really rigorous uh, morning ritual that I do every morning. And if you like, I could share some of that with you. And it's not like you're going to wake up and all of a sudden, because you're grateful, God's going to just immediately put things in your life. It doesn't work that way. Yeah. It's, it's over time. It's a muscle that you build over time. It's a, it's an attitude that you build over time of gratitude. It's a reframe of mind that when certain things happen in your life, you start, you start looking for the opportunity. So Napoleon Hill said in his great book, Think and Grow Rich by Napoleon Hill. He said that in every adversity lies an equal to or better than opportunity. Cool. Every adversity lies an equal to or better than opportunity. That means that life is happening for me, not to Mm -hmm. me. That means that when things that I perceive that are bad, ultimately there's something good in there for me. Just think about all of the things that, the worst things that you perceive that one time in your life that were horrible experiences Years later, you wind up looking back and realizing that they were the best things that happened to you because you grew tremendously and incrementally because of them. Exactly. What if, what if we can look at those things while we're going through them and while we're going through them in that, in that disappointment and that instead of being, we could be disappointed, but reframe ourselves 
and say, okay, where's my opportunity here? What is there for me to learn in this situation? And know that it's happening for you. And learn that and know that if, if you take that approach, what's my opportunity and what's there for me to learn, that mm -hmm. you're going to come out ahead of it because there's no such thing as failures. There's only lessons. Exactly. And, and, and I, I, I heard uh, Jordan Peterson. I don't know if you're familiar with Jordan Peterson. I heard Jordan yeah. Peterson recently in an interview say something that really stuck to me, man. Really, really stuck to me. And it's really relevant in today's world, especially in real estate, especially where we are in the cycle of the market. You're too young to know or to have been through cycles. This is your first cycle as an adult. Your first cycle in real estate, seeing it come up and now coming down. But he said that God gave us memory so that we can improve our lives in the future. Ooh. I'm going to repeat Based that. on the past. That's right. God gave us memory so that we can improve our life in the future. There's so much wisdom in those words. Understand there the, is. the power of what he just said. And I was like, when I heard that, I was like, holy shit, that took me away. I have a book in my home. I keep a bunch of different books. I keep a, a thinking journal where I spend time every morning thinking, what's my next move? Because I like to think like a grandmaster. Well, grandmaster nice. things in terms of this next 16 moves. I'm constantly looking at the market. When I start a project, I'm looking at the end. What's the outcome I want? Um, and Patrick, but David. Yeah, that's right. So your next move, your next five moves. Um, when you think of what, when, when I think about the, what the statement he said, right. And the market that we currently are, that we're currently in, you think about that. I, I'm like, holy crap, that makes so much sense because I went through that trauma of 2008, 2009. Mm -hmm. And I went through that. That was traumatic. I lost my business. I was a hundred, two hundred thousand totally. dollars. I was traumatic, very traumatic because of that. I, it created a hyper sense of urgency in me that if that happened again, while I'm playing this game, I have to be ready and I have to protect my family. So I'm constantly building and I'm growing and I'm pushing, but I'm also playing defense at the same time, thinking if that happens, how can I exit? If that happens, how are we protected? If that happens, how am I taking care of my family, my business, my, right? If that, so, so it's, it's because of that memory, right? And I take the time that when things happen to me, I have a thinking journal. This is where I was going to say a moment ago. In my thinking journal, I write when I'm going through something, right? Like right now, as we record this podcast, we're going through a, we're going through a banking crisis. I've seen, I've seen a similar movie like this before. And I'm going, I'm trying to refinance. I got three properties I'm refinancing. And I got an, I got amazing credit score. We're liquid. We like, we're beautiful for the banks. Okay. And dude, the banks are super tight right now. They're giving me a hard time to give me a refinance on, to refinance a loan for me. I'm getting a hard time. And I am, I am an ideal, an ideal borrower, an ideal borrower as an investor. And so, so I've seen this before. I've seen this in 2000. Meaning what? They don't have cash? No, that they're, so, so what happens is, not that they don't have cash, but they're playing in fear because okay. SVB bank just went out of business. You got a lot of banks that are having trouble right now. So what's happening is um, the, the mortgage bankers association just put out a report that the lending criteria are as tight as they were in 2013 right now, currently as we speak, that means that all of the criteria are tighter and it's harder to get money to access capital from banks. Mm -hmm. Right. To access capital is harder. So you're going to have to have higher credit scores, higher liquidity. You're going to have to put more money down. They're going to make you put, they're going to make you go through the ringer to give you money. Right. That's what that means. I've seen this before. Um, so when, when you write things down, you write your experience and you have a journal of your lessons, Hey, um, you know, what could I have done differently? Right. So, Hey, I'm going through this right now. What could I have done differently? And what am I learning? Right. And you take the time to write this down. Now you're, you're putting it into your nervous system because you're physically writing it down. And what happens is you accumulate wisdom over time when you do that. Yeah, for sure. Because what, because what happens is next time you're going through an experience, 
And it may not be the same thing, but your brain, your memory identifies the patterns because our memory identifies pattern. So it could be something else, not necessarily in, in the same scenario, but in another scenario in business. And you say, wait a minute, this looks a lot like that thing that happened over there. Perate, let me ask a different question. This can happen here. Hold up, red flag, because I, because you took the time to think, because you took the time to find your lessons. Your brain is looking for, um, for uh, it just it just can pre it can see the moves on the chessboard before they happen. Mm -hmm. It starts yeah. to see the patterns. If that makes any sense. It, it makes total sense, man. And then, and then, you know, automatically, you don't know how to, you know, but you know, right. You know what I just found out, man. And then th this is tying back to the gratitude thing. Um, but I just found out that there's an unlimited amount of love and gratitude in your heart and in my heart and in everyone's heart. Like our natural state of being is of abundance and of gratitude and of love. That's like our natural mm -hmm. state of being. And, but we feel everything that we feel because of all of all, all of the other things that you know are going are going are going on in our daily lives, right? But like if you take all of that away, you're left with the core, which is love and gratitude. Like every single morning, I, I also have like a regimented um, morning routine where I focus on my internal world for like a couple of hours, and I sit down and then couple I just of, focus. You said a couple a couple hours. Yeah, like an hour and a half, you know, just for me, an hour and a half for learning, an hour and a half for working out, oh, and okay. an hour yeah, and a half say, for my family. I was say you said internal. I thought I thought you were uh, meditating because when you said internal focus, I get it. You have a, your hour and a half is your morning. You own your morning. Got it. Yeah. So so when I sit down and med I meditate for like thirty minutes, and I sit down and 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 like just focus on my heart, and then. And like, there's nothing to be great. Well, the, obviously there's always something to be grateful for, but what I'm trying to say, like, I'm not thinking about anything to be grateful for, but I feel gratitude. Mm -hmm. Right. And that's when I realized that you have an unlimited amount of love and gratitude in your heart, man. And you have an unlimited amount of love and wisdom in every single part of your body. You were, you were talking about how, when you write it, it goes into your nervous system and then you learn things. Well, and, and then that you, the, and then the, your body stores wisdom. Well, it does, man. And uh, when I meditate, I, I like I like focus on the chakras, right? Like on uh, down here, and then on the stomach, and then every and then on every stop. So like I stop for like five minutes, and I focus on every single point of my body for like five minutes. And every single stop that I make and focus, I receive insights, man. And like my body talks to me. It's that's crazy. And yeah. I just found that out a couple of months ago. That's awesome, man. That's amazing. That's an amazing strategy. That's awesome. And it's, and, and then you know what? And then you know how you heal. I found out how to heal, man. Um, and I'm, I'm, I'm working into turning it into a product, right. To like share it with people. But, um, the, the way that you heal is by doing that, right. By focusing on every single part of your body, because every single part of your body or chakras, you know, like the spirituals call it, call it chakras, um, has like, it has to do with something, right? So for example, your root, which is at the end of your spine has to do with survival, right? Um, and then the, 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 the other one, the sacral has to do with like sexuality, right? Um, and then, and then it's insecurity and then in your stomach that has to do with your power to like take decisions. And then your heart has to do with love. And then your throat has to do with the ability to communicate. And then right here has to do with thinking and all of that. So what, like if you make a stop at every single, uh, you know, point of your body, you'll receive your trauma. Like you, you'll know what you're traumatized about, right? Like you'll get messages. And then the way you heal, man, is by realizing and knowing that you have unlimited amounts of love. And, and gratitude and wisdom in your heart. And it, it makes like a triangle, right? So you send love and gratitude to whatever part of your body you're trying to heal, where all of that negative emotion is accumulated. And that is how you, that's simply how you heal. That's all, that's all you do. That's awesome. Yeah, you release the energy, the negative energy from your body. And then going back to what you were talking about, right? Like instead of, um, you, you look back and you were like, that was the lesson that I was trying to learn, right? And if you know that, and you know that everything is going in your favor, well, you can go through struggles in your life. Yeah, like going through struggles, but knowing that they're happening for you. And then instead of waiting, instead of having to wait years to like look back and take the lesson, you could like dig for the lesson right there and move forward faster, longer and with more ease. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I want to share something else with your listeners, if I may. Go ahead, about, man. About, you know. We, you know, I want to bring it back to real estate because I, I mean, I'm not sure what your, what your listeners really with what they, if they're here for, for personal development, I could talk personal development. I love personal development. Talk Me this too. all day. Um, 
But I think I think a lot of people, uh, in my opinion, I find that a lot of people want the personal development, but they also want skills, right? They want yeah. things. To, hey, they want real things they can get their hands on. So we gave them some, we gave them, you know, some strategies and some things for the mindset. And I think that a lot of people struggling out there, there's a lot of people struggling out there right now in around the world. There's going to be, it's going to get tougher. I'm going to tell you right now, I've seen this kind of movie before. I believe we're in a recession already. They're not calling for it. I, I, we're going to start seeing unemployment numbers start creeping up really soon here. And we're going to, we're going to, we're going to experience a little bit of pain. Hopefully it's not long and deep. What I will tell my advice for people going through whatever they're going through, or if they're experiencing a job loss, I want you to remember two things, guys. The difference between poor people, middle-class Americans, uh, or middle-class people, and rich people, and wealthy people, is one simple thing. And that's that poor people think in terms of right now. They think in mm. terms of, and I don't blame them, I've been there, right? And I don't, I don't blame them, I've been there. You, you don't have anything, you get a little money and you want to take a vacation and you want to buy the car and you want to, you want to spend it right now because you've never, you live a limited life. So when yeah. you get a little extra, you don't think about investing or you don't think about the future. You just think about, Hey, I want to give myself something right now. Cause I work too hard. I relate with that guys. I know what that's like, but if you can build the muscle to start thinking about if you start to change and you start to learn some different things and you think about what you do today, if you sacrifice today, your tomorrow will be better. That's the big difference with peop, rich people and poor people. My rich friends think about what can I do today that will make my next year better and my next year better and my kid's life better and my grandkids' life better. It's always about sacrificing today for a better tomorrow. Eventually, guys, if you do that long enough, your tomorrows will be forever. You don't have to worry about your for your your tomorrows forever yeah. for the rest of your life financially. And I'm talking just financially now. So if you get some skills and you and you learn a few things about on how the wealthy create wealth, and I gave you the pointer, 90% of self-made millionaires across the around the world are they use real estate. Today real estate, then whether you like real estate or not, right? I believe that every man's responsibility is to figure out how to become financially free. We got to figure out this money thing because we live in a capitalist world. You got to figure that thing out. If not, you're going to be a slave to a job or you're going to be slave to working for someone for the rest of your life. And you're going to get to be old and you're going to be broke and you're going to be poor like our grandparents, like our parents and so on and so forth, right? Yeah. You want to break that curse. So you have to start thinking, okay, I need to learn that skill so that I can start building today for tomorrow. I'll give you guys an example of what I mean by that, guys. I bought a property in 2018, a duplex for $35,000, $35,000. And um, I put- What is it worth now? I'm gonna tell you right now. I'm, I bought it in 2018 for $35,000, I put, about $25,000 into the property. And a, we, we, at the time I can only rent it at the time I refied it, I refinanced it. Then it was worth 90,000. That was a home run still. Right. Cause I put yeah. worth 90. I bought it for 35. I put 20, 25, right. It's worth 90. I refied it. I had infinity rate of return. If you don't know what infinity rate of return, look that up guys. This is a language you need to learn how to speak. This is a language of, of the language of the rich and the wealthy learning cash on cash returns, infinity rate of return. Anyways, I have infinity rate of return. That property I was renting for a max of seven fifty, seven hundred and fifty dollars a month. It was a three bedroom, one bathroom in that area. That was a max I could get. Right. Yeah. Last week, right. Last week I had a vacancy. I had it to one of the two, one of those units. I still own that property. Last week it turned my property manager, rented that property for $1,195, $1,195, guys. Understand what this means, guys. My mortgage is still the same. Well, you're paying, my mortgage, right? Yeah. yeah, my mortgage payment is, has not gone up. It's still the same. But my income has doubled, almost doubled on that property. You see what I'm saying? And you don't you're, have to do anything. 
Well, I have to make, you know, there, you got to run it like a business. You got to have, you got to put reserves for vacancy, maintenance, repairs. I got a property manager, but it's all included in my number. So there's the, the skill part of it that you have to understand the numbers. But the point is that my profitability, my profit margins have gone up by 40 to 60% on that one asset in a yeah. matter of five years, guys. So if you accumulate, you just think about the compound effect. If you accumulate 10 of those, over five years, how different your life will be in 10 years or five years, guys. So this is what I'm talking about, thinking about tomorrow and thinking about sacrificing today. And let me tell you something, when I bought that property, I went through a lot of shit. I fired two, con three contractors on that property. Uh, one stole from me. It was one of those, those crap shows. Yeah. But even through that, all that stress, I remember saying to myself, this is all in my best interest. This is a long-term game all happened, life happening for me. Ooh. And I could tell you today here, five years later, that probably- That was true. Now, that, that's 100% because I was thinking about the future. I was not thinking about just the pain I was going through while I was rehabbing that property. Yeah. So awesome, think man. about the future, guys. Think about so, what you can sacrifice today for a better tomorrow. Long-term thinking, focus, take massive action. And, and, and the third one was, let's see, the third one was, I have it here, I forgot it. The Grace. third one was, Grace. oh yeah, gratitude. Grace. Right. Have gratitude in your heart to attract better things to, to to so that God wants to bless you. I like that. So, man, we have a couple of minutes and I end my podcast with a couple of questions, actually three. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and ask you the first one. All right. So the first one is. Well, this is not the first one, but I, I couldn't ask you this, man. What is the biggest roadblock for entrepreneurs that you see them have? The biggest what? Roadblock. Roadblock their mindset. Yeah, their mindset. I, I knew you were going to do that. All right. So to follow up, what is a mindset shift or yeah, a mindset shift that like you should have to be successful in real estate? You have to believe that you can. You have to believe mm -hmm. that you're worth it. You have to believe that you're capable. You have to like it's a it's a whole total. You know, when you come from poverty, you come from nothing. You have to believe that if a guy like me without a college degree, without a formal education can do it, grew up in poverty, grew up in the hood came from nothing, came from poverty, can do it. So can you, I'm nothing special. I'm, I was a C, I was a C average student in high school. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I had this determination and this vision and this long-term thing and this the burning desire is what Napoleon Hill calls it a burning desire for better and more. If you have that and you take a massive action, that's what it takes guys. Just awesome. believe, believe that you can do it. Great, man. Thanks. So, um, I know that, you know, your superpowers, man, are finding deals and raising capital. So what is a successful strategy for finding good deals, you know, like in real estate? Um, one, of, one successful strategy, I'm going to give you one that I use efficiently is that I educate. So I do things like this. One thing I do is I'm going to give you an illustration. Okay. I'm going to take off my ring for those that are watching and those that are listening. I want to show you something. See, God, if God gives me this silver, this piece of silver, right? My ring, okay. right? God gives it to me. So God says, hey, Martin, I'm going to bless you with this piece of silver. Boom. And he puts it in my hand. Okay. And I'm like, and I have it in my hand. So guys, for those that are not watching, I'm clenching my hand. I have the piece of silver in my, in my fist tied up. Okay. If I'm holding on to that piece of silver and God is like, hey, I want to give you more. Can I receive more? If my hand is closed, can no. I receive? I cannot receive. So therefore, if I open up my hand and I'm extending that piece of silver to you, what what am I what am I what am I now? Now I am open to continue to receive. So now because I'm giving to you and I'm passing it forward, God is continuing to bless me. Now I'm open to continue to be blessed. So I believe in one of successful strat one of the strategies that I use successfully is I give it away. I give it all away, right? I, in my podcast, Latinos and Real Estate Investing Podcast, make sure you go check that out. I teach everything. I host a monthly meetup every month, Real Estate Investors, where I put a room of investors and I teach them. You want to go find deals? I teach them how to find it. I give, I have a, a, a class, I, a, a course I created. It's only a hundred bucks. Dude, I give everything. I give templates for my Craigslist ads, for my Facebook ads, how to get your first deal for free, like with, with very little money. I give it all away because I believe that the law of prosperity is giving. And when you give in turn, you will receive. That's just the law, right? Mm -hmm. So I give a lot of value to the real estate investors community, to the investors community. 
And in return, I get a lot of all the first deals in my market. Dude, I see them all. I see them all because I, nice. provide, a lot, yeah. I, provide, I provide a lot of value to the community. And people want to reciprocate to you for sure. For free. I provide a lot of value for to people for free. So a lot of times it's like, Hey, you're doing all this stuff, Martin. What do you, how do you get paid for it? I, the universe, God pays me. I take like, dude, I, I like, I live a life that I only dreamed of as a kid. Today. Mm -hmm. I only dreamed of the things that I do and the places I travel and the things I, I do what I want when I want, you know, like I live, a, I live, a, I live a wonderful life. God has blessed me. Yeah. So I give it back. Awesome, man. The last one is knowing what you know now, man, what piece of advice would you give yourself at the beginning of your journey? Almost, you know, 26 years ago. To help you have, uh, um, to help you have faster, easier, and smoother success. Stop thinking about just right now and start thinking about what you can sacrifice today, Martin, so you can be better tomorrow. If I, if I'd only learned that earlier in my journey, if I'd only learned that, if I've only had that mindset, if I only had someone teach me that about the way long -term. people think, think long term. Dude, 10 years will go like this. Five years will go like this. And the thing is, the five years are going to go anyways. So guess what? If I do something, if I don't do something different, I'm going to get the same results. So five years are going to come. Do I want to be in the same spot in five years or do I want to be in a better place? I want to be in a better place. If someone would just have freaking pulled my ear and said, dude, This is what you need to do. You need to start, stop thinking about just right now and, 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 and instant gratification and start thinking about that has gotten me into a lot of trouble. My marriage, relationships and business, a lot of areas. If I could just, if I would have learned that earlier, think about the long-term, stay focused on the long-term picture, sacrifice today for a better tomorrow. I would be in a much better place today than I am today. And I am blessed. I'm not complaining. I am blessed. Thank you, Father, for, for blessing me, Lord. I'm grateful for that. Um, I am a blessed man. I'm very lucky. I'm healthy, beautiful wife, wonderful kids. I live a wonderful life, wonderful business. It's not. I'm not saying that it, it, my life is perfect, but man, from where I come from, I'm blessed. Yeah, for sure. So, man, um, you know what I feel, man? I feel like... I want more like you, you left me wanting more, you know what I'm saying? So like one hour wasn't enough. I am sure that, you know, a lot of people watching, listening felt, felt like feel, feel like this as well. Um, they're like, ah, oh, damn, like, where can I go and get more of this guy? Right. So, so Martin, where can people go to find more of everything that you got going on, man, your real estate deals, your investment opportunities, your mindset, coaching, training, everything, man, where can we go? And where would be the best place to find you? Best place to find me is go to my, go to either Instagram, my IG, Martin Perdomo, the elite strategist. I go by the elite strategist. Check out my podcast, uh, Latinos and real estate investing podcast. If you go to awesome. the elite strategist, I have uh, a link, a link tree up there and you can see all of my stuff and uh, on my profile, you go to the, the profile and you press on the link and you'll find my course. I host a meetup every month, every other month. Now I'm doing it. I host a meetup. I do a lot in this space, man. I, I like to give a lot. I do a lot of trainings. I do a lot of speaking engagements. I, I like to give it back, man. I, I because I I remember when I was sleep. I, my mom kicked me out at 16, and that's what I didn't share. My mom kicked me out at 16, and when she kicked me out at 16, I was sleeping in the train and in rooftops in New York City. And I remember being so broke and so poor, wanting God. I remember praying, God, can you please put someone in my space that can teach me how to create wealth? can teach me how to be rich. I'll do it. I don't want no one to give me anything. I will go work my ass off and do it. And I was always looking for that person to show up in my life. And now that God has blessed me, it's my turn to be that person in other people's life that are asking for it. I will give it to you. Just, just plug in. I give it all away. Boom. Awesome, man. Well, we'll, we'll have all of that information. Um, wherever this appears, this is going to appear everywhere. And, uh, it was a pleasure, man getting to meet you and getting to talk a little bit with you and uh, getting to learn from you was a pleasure. Thank you very much. And well, I'll see you later, Martin. Thank you for having me, Alex. I really appreciate it. Bye-bye, man.
Thank you for listening to the Modern Real Estate Investor Podcast. We want you to know that we love and appreciate you. And we are super grateful about being part of your journey of becoming a successful real estate entrepreneur and having it all. Please share this episode with a friend who you think will be impacted positively. Send it to someone who you know is interested in real estate and dreams of having it all and being the best they can be across all areas. And if you thought this episode was really valuable, share it on your social media as a post or a story. We have a special gift for all of those who contribute to the modern kings and queens movement. So for those of you who decided to share this episode and help us spread our message, send me a message letting me know on any social media platform at Alex Ramirez, the modern king. I have a special surprise for you. Thank you for watching and I'll see you later.